welcome friends today i discuss about an interesting event cavitation and embolism in plants embolism breaks the water column continuity and stops water transport xylem vessels form a series of parallel interconnecting pathways for water movement as the vessels are interconnected through pits water can move around the blocked xylem vessels thus preventing embolisms here is a diagram that shows normal and embolized xylem vessel in normal xylem vessel water moves in upward direction but in case of embolized xylem vessel water movement in upward direction is interrupted Let us discuss about cavitation and embolism. Cavitation is the phenomenon of gas or vapor filled cavities in liquids in motion in a region where the pressure of liquid falls below its vapor pressure. The term cavitation was originated from a Latin word cavus that means hollow. Cavitation occurs in xylem of vascular plants when the tension of water within the xylem becomes so high that dissolved air within water expands to fill either the vessels or the tracheids the blocking of a xylem vessel or tracheid by an air bubble or cavity is called as embolism the term embolism was originated from a greek word embolas which means stopper such a xylem vessel or tracheid is said to be embolized here is a diagram that shows xylem tubes with air bubbles that blocks water transport in upward direction Let us discuss about distribution and occurrence of embolism in plant. Functional xylem components that means vessels and tracheids normally contain water and are hydraulically connected to upstream and downstream units. Under such situation root pressure generates positive xylem pressure which reduces tension in xylem water and allows air to re-dissolve in the xylem solution xylem cavitation corresponds to the rapid breakdown of the water column in the tissue and the formation of a cavity filled with vapor water that means near vacuum pressure in some trees the sound of cavitation is clearly audible particularly in summer when the rate of evapotranspiration is highest here is a diagram that shows embolism and cavitation here in a water channel air bubble is present it represents the blocking of narrow water channels due to expansion of air bubbles as a result of increase in temperature and tension to discuss about distribution and occurrence of embolism in plant rapidly air degasses into this cavity which increases pressure to the value of the normal atmospheric pressure 
एट दिस स्टेट द होल भेसल लुमेन कॉन्टेंस ए लार्ज एयर बबल दैट ब्लॉक्स द वाटर फ्लो थ्रू द ट्यूब दस एयर एम्बलिज्म ऑकर्स इन प्लैंड्स कॉजिंग जाइलेम ब्लॉकेज एंड रिजल्ट इन सीवर वाटर स्ट्रेस डेसिडुअस ट्रीज सेड लीव्स इन द ऑटम पार्टली बिकॉज कैविटेशन इनक्रीजेस विथ डिक्रीज टेम्परेचर्स हेयर इज ए डायग्राम दैट शोज मुभमेंट ऑफ लिकुईड वाटर बै पैराल इंटर कनेक्टिंग पाथवेज इन भेसल्स Let us discuss about the bypassing of embolism in plants. If cavitation or embolism occurs only in a few xylem vessels or tracheids, the upward movement of water may continue uninterrupted through adjacent unembolized xylem vessels or tracheids, bypassing the unembolized ones. But widespread cavitation or embolism in xylem as under severe water stress condition reduces a plant's capacity to transport water from soil to leaves this reduction in xylem's hydraulic conductivity can impair rate of carbon fixation by inducing stomatal closure to prevent further cavitation and desiccation of leaf tissues here is a diagram that shows the normal and embolized xylem vessel the water moves in upward direction by another xylem vessel and bypasses the embolized xylem vessels Let us discuss about the mechanism of embolism formation. There are three ways to embolism formation. Firstly, water stress induced embolism. Water stress induced embolism occurs by air seeding at pores in the intervessels or intertracheids pit membranes. The length of the conduit formed by xylem vessel or tracheids diameter of the conduit and size of the pits or bordered pits play important role in cavitation and embolism under severe water stress tension of water in xylem becomes so high that dissolved air within water expands to fill either the vessel or tracheid elements and cavitation occurs Here is a diagram that shows gas filled conduit and water filled conduit the gas filled conduit and water filled conduits are expressed as capital G and capital W respectively in the case of water filled conduits water moves by pits with the large pores to discuss about the mechanism of embolism formation the second way is embolism formation by winter freezing 
when xylem is frozen while under tension extensive embolism develops after thaw that means melting of ice as air bubbles forced out of solutes and during freezing expand and nucleate cavitation embolisms may also form in frozen vessels by sublimation for example sugar maple and grape vine the third important way is pathogen induced embolism vascular diseases caused by pathogens induce water stress in host by reducing the hydraulic conductivity of the xylem and formation of embolism here is a diagram that shows functional embolized freeze induced cavitation and drought induced cavitation in the case of functional xylem vessel water moves in upward direction smoothly but in case of freezing induced and drought induced cavitation water movement is partially blocked but in embolized vessel water movement is totally blocked in case of freezing induced cavitation embolism develops due to removal of air bubbles from the solution of xylem vessel Let us discuss about the conditions of embolism. During prolonged drought for 30 days or so, the embolism is rare because the pressure potential is very low at minus 2.90 megapascals. Further drought period reduce the xylem pressure potential to minus 3.20 megapascal. complete stomatal closing is followed and embolism cannot take place gradual increase in the pressure potential may induce embolism in the leaves but the stem functions normally with the advent of rains the pressure is raised to 0 megapascal which induces embolism in the xylem shaft Here is a diagram that shows the relation between percentage of cavitation versus xylem pressure. When xylem pressure is minus two megapascal, stomata close and embolism stops near about, and the plant remain viable. Let us discuss about the measurement of embolism. The first method is detection by acoustic means that means reflection of sound waves. The second method is xylem embolism in excised stems and petioles can be detected by measuring the xylem flow resistance. A decrease in resistance after the removal of the flow impeding embolisms by a pressure treatment indicated their previous presence in the axis the third method is uses of dye within xylem also detect the xylem bubbles and the fourth method is cryo sem studies can also detect bubbles within the xylem elements here is a diagram that shows the relation between percentage of embolized tracheids and xylem tension the black line represents the first cycle of embolism and the gray line represents the second cycle of embolism
it indicates that embolism occurs in plants in different times. The lower diagram shows water bubbles in the xylem vessel, which are measured by different methods that are mentioned earlier. Let us discuss about the repair strategies to avoid damage caused by embolism. The first strategy is by generating positive xylem pressure. In herbaceous plants, repairing embolism occurs at night when transpiration is low or absent and root pressure is high. Under such situation, root pressure generates positive xylem pressure which reduces tension in xylem water and allows air to re-dissolve in the xylem solution. Positive xylem pressures have been observed in trees for example sugar maple and woody vines in spring and those plants are known to recover from freezing induced embolisms in spring. Here is a diagram that shows gas filled cavited xylem elements. Let us discuss about the second strategy to avoid damage caused by embolism. The second strategy is production of new xylem conduits. Another effective mechanism to restore hydraulic conductivity in xylem after cavitation is to produce new xylem conduits in those plants which possess capacity for secondary growth. New xylem vessels and tracheids produced each spring in such plants, for example shrubs or trees, replace the older cavitated and non-functional xylem conduits which may fulfill the hydraulic conductivity needs of those plants.